coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unmanned. Stratospheric Hydron UAV reaches new 30 kilometer height. Transport Canada finds drone pilot over two incidents in Toronto. And the FAA eases restrictions on drone operations over some federal facilities. Welcome to Aero News Network's Airborne Unmanned, a weekly news program covering all things unmanned. In partnership with AUVSI, the Association for Unmanned Vehicle Systems International. I'm your host, Sophie Herlock. UAVOS and Stratodynamics conducted a flight of the Hydron Stratospheric Glider to a new altitude of 98,450 feet, breaking their previous record of 82,000 feet. The night flight was the first of two flights commissioned to test a new mini USO Ammon Airglow detector from the Slovak Academy of Sciences Institute of Experimental Physics. In addition to the Ammon detector, Stratodynamics and UAVOS used the flight opportunity to test and advance aspects of the Hydron design, including stratospheric flight dynamics, data links, and UAVOS's autopilot. The Hydron offered the perfect solution for the campaign as its programmable flight path back enabled an unobstructed view upwards from the stratosphere and returned the valuable instrument to the launch location. All went according to plan with the UAVOS ground crew lifting Hydron by a balloon to the 30 kilometer target altitude and released in negative 76 degrees Fahrenheit stratospheric winds. Despite the harsh environment, the Hydron performed well with the real time data transmitted to the ground station during a four-hour controlled descent. Now, let's take a quick look at a few short stories making rounds of the unmanned vehicle communities. It's time for today's Unmanned Minute. Farmers facing destructive weather events will soon have new tools thanks to a research grant awarded by the USDA. To Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University Associate Professor of Aeronautical Science, Kevin Adkins. The research being funded by a $500,000 grant through the USDA's National Institute of Food and Agriculture will combine state-of-the-art drone-captured imagery, meteorological data, and LIDAR data with commonly available geographic information systems data and satellite imagery. The U.S. Navy's Triton team is working alongside its partners from the Royal Australian Air Force to develop and execute the cooperative program between the two countries. Over the past year, the RAAF have provided eight cooperative project personnel in support of the UAS program after signing an agreement in 2018 to procure up to six Triton aircraft and associated mission control stations under the MQ-4C Triton Development Production and Sustainment Cooperative program. Exnot introduced new additions to its cooling case line, specifically designed to be used with their Pilot Series iPad cooling cases. The line of mount includes single and dual suction cup variants to stay attached to the glass and other non-porous surfaces, as well as a clamp-based version to grab and hold onto any exposed tube. The three mounts, built of lightweight yet durable aluminum, are infinitely adjustable based on their double ball joint design. D-Drone announced the continuation of their license agreement with F.E. Warren Air Force Base. The base was selected to test the D-Drone platform in June of 2018 as part of a DIU testing phase that included six DOD facilities and has been continuously testing, evaluating, and using the capability for over a year. Now back to the rest of the news. Following an investigation of two incidents in downtown Toronto, Transport Canada has issued notices of assessment of monetary penalties to an individual for 11 violations of the Canadian Aviation Regulations related to the operation of a drone. During celebrations after the final game of the National Basketball Association Championship and during the Toronto Raptors victory celebration, an individual flew a drone over both outdoor events. Transport Canada opened an investigation into the incidents, and based on the evidence collected, the individual has been served fines totaling $2,750 Canadian dollars. It is mandatory for pilots of all remotely piloted aircraft weighing more than approximately 9 ounces and less than 55 pounds to register their drones and obtain a drone pilot certificate. 
There are additional requirements for drone pilots who want to fly in controlled airspace or over by standards, including holding an advanced remotely piloted aircraft system pilot certificate, passing a flight review, seeking NAV Canada's permission to fly in the airspace, and flying a drone that has been declared safe for the intended purpose by the manufacturer. The FAA is working with the DOD to establish intermittent restrictions on drone flights within the lateral boundaries of select federal facilities during specified times. Currently, drone operators are prohibited from flying at these locations at all times. The FAA is working to ensure that these restrictions are narrowly tailored and remain in effect only when necessary. No TAMs will be issued in advance indicating the sites where these intermittent restrictions will apply. Drone operators will be able to easily identify the status of the airspace at these locations using the FAA's Unmanned Aircraft System UAS Data Display Systems Interactive Map, which will show the following. The airspace shapes will appear gray when the Section 99.7 Special Security Instructions airspace is inactive and no restrictions are placed on the drone operators. Approximately 24 hours before restrictions are activated, the designated airspace will change to yellow as a warning that restrictions will soon become active. At the end of the 24-hour warning window, the designated airspace will change to red while the drone restrictions are in effect. Specific activation times can also be viewed by clicking on the individual airspace shapes in UDDS. And that wraps up our show for today, everyone. Thank you so much for watching, and please subscribe and check us out on Facebook and on Twitter. For more information on the innovative world of all things unmanned, head over to auvsi.org and airborne-amand.net. I'll see you right back here tomorrow.